A transforaminal endoscopic minimally invasive targeted intervention is being demonstrated in this patient. The patient has a left-sided L4-5 herniation. This indentation in the myelocolum is seen. The fragment is up-migrated L4-5 large herniation. And if we follow the sagittal images from the right to the left, we see that this is a predominantly left-sided herniation. It is almost gone behind the body of L4 up to the level of the pedicle of L4. This is the cross-section and this shows that the fragment has lifted away the dural sac from the body. The x-ray shows a normal lordosis, no disease in the bones and no lysthesis. We are going to target the fragment through the foramen of L4-5 above the crest from the left side. We anesthetize the skin, put the needle in the foramen and then maneuver the needle in such a way under C-arm that the needle comes into the disc. The patient is monitored throughout the procedure. The needle is then put in such a way that it goes in the posterior quadrant of the disc and is seen in the center of the disc in AP picture. We remove the stilet and pass a guide wire and remove the needle and then the guide wire is used for passing all instruments later. We pass a dilator after incising the skin and then this dilator is maneuvered in such a way that we position it exactly in the foramen next to the fragment. The fragment is going to have two components. One is going to be intra and the second the extra discal portion. The dilator is gently tapped at the base of the herniation intradiscally and lies below the fragment. Then a cannula is passed over the dilator and this cannula is positioned in such a way that we can grab the fragment to start with from intradiscal side. This is the position of the cannula on the lateral x-ray in the C-arm and we can see that the fragment is visible directly once we put the scope. The instrument is seen lying below the fragment and as can be seen here, the intradiscal portion of the fragment will be removed with a use of a grasper. We also use a bipolar radio frequency cautery to reduce the volume of the nucleus which is a part of the herniated fragment and we use the grasper further to reduce the fragments. More portion is removed and then we slowly try to position ourselves extra discally so that we can target the fragment which is lying outside the disc level. Here we can see the position of the cannula which is more extra discal. We can see the epidural tissue around 12 o'clock with epidural fat and a little ooze. On the left side 9 o'clock is the exiting root which is L4 in this patient. The fragment is gently pulled outside. Due care is taken of the surrounding tissue. A bipolar cautery is used to reduce the volume of the surrounding tissue and to induce hemostasis. Then we go for the collar of the nuclear fragment which is formed by the annulus here which is cut under vision by an annular cutter and then the fragment is freed from any holding collar of the annulus. Once the fragment becomes free, it is also freed from surrounding tissue by use of a bipolar radio frequency probe. The probe may also be used to induce hemostasis. The fragment is made visible and free from the surrounding tissue so that it can be targeted very well. It is being shown here and a cuff impulse is seen as the patient is coughing under our order and we see the fragment moving. As more and more fragment is visualized by positioning of the cannula closer to the fragment, we start removal of the fragment. Our aim is to remove the total fragment. At times, since the fragment is not removed in one piece, it is removed piecemeal by proper positioning of the instruments. Here we can see the instruments being positioned in the axilla, in the AP picture in the C-arm. 
we put our grass fir in the axilla. Here we can see on the left side is the exiting root, on the right side is the dural sac, and we are removing the fragment slowly. The fragment is likely to be adherent to the surrounding nervous tissue and gentle maneuvering of the fragment is done so that the removal is safe and not painful beyond a certain extent for the patient. Patient normally does get the pain because we are recreating the situation which is causing the pain. This also is a confirmation that this is a fragment which is causing the symptoms. The fragment is removed with gentle rotatory movement of the grass fur and an attempt is done as to clear the axilla in this patient. As we can see, multiple fragments are being removed from the patient. All these fragments are weighed. It has been found that our patients have a nucleus weighing about 8 grams and in this patient the, re the fragments which we removed were close to around 4 grams. Total four fragments have been removed from this patient with a total decompression of the axilla of the nerve root and we have a clear demonstration of the cleaned decompressed axilla at the end of the surgery. We can see here that the axilla is free of any fragment. There is a small ooze which can also be controlled by use of an irrigation pump. Here we see the axilla with the L4 root on the left and now we will be able to see the pulsating dural sac on the right side going across the picture. We also see the annular tissue at the middle part of the picture with the disc at the lower portion. We try to rotate the cannula anti-clockwise to show the exiting route which here was seen on the left these are the fragments which were removed. This is a cannula which was put through a skin incision which was about 8 millimeters, as can be seen here. This is a HD camera which was used for visualization and this was the scope which was used for the surgery. The patient was monitored throughout the surgery for vital signs and she was awake and aware and now she is being asked about her complaints. She says that she has full relief of pain there is no pain whatsoever. She does have some discomfort in the back. This is the cannula and the scope assembly which was used for surgery. This is the straight leg raising which has become free and 90 degrees at the end of surgery which was 20 degrees before. The patient is able to move her toes well. This is a targeted fragmentectomy.